Oh, this is really weird. I'm not used to recording with my phone. I don't like it. My face is like ginormous. All right, today I thought I would show you um, how I go about finding new art journals, new altered books to art in. It's my favorite method um, of art journaling is not to buy brand new books, although I do that too. <laughs> but I really love an altered book. And I don't know, there's something about it because there's something on the pages already um, you know, your background is like halfway done, so you can just like throw on some gesso or throw on some paint or some washi tape or masking tape or duct tape, or tape, tape, sensing a theme here. Um, and then like go to town and your half of your, um, you know, your background's already done already. So what's cool is that you probably saw my most recent video, which was, let me flip my camera around. Why can't I flip it around? Is that it? No. What is this? Hmm. Okay, well, I can't figure that out. So here, there's my, this is my latest journal. That was just my last video, which uh, shows the whole flip through. But this was um, an old drawing book. I think it was from like the 80s. And I got it at this place called the Scrap Exchange in Durham, North Carolina. And um, I bought it for 25 cents. It was missing the cover, cover and they felt bad for me. So she's like, oh, I'll just charge you a quarter. I'm like, score. So I filled it up with 16 projects and I'm super sad because it's all done and I want to do another one. So I thought what I would do is do a little walkthrough in the store with you to show you the kinds of things that I'm looking for when I'm looking for a new art journal to art in. I do have one that I got there um, a while ago that was for a dollar, which does fit the bill. I, li I do like it. I've done a couple projects in it. Um, this hideous one and this one. Um... But I also, for some reason, I like the paperback versus um, a hardcover, which you'd think it actually would be the other way around. But um, so anyways, I thought I would take you along with me and a couple of my kids and we'd go pick out a new art journal together. Let's do it. <laughs> Just leaving this trap exchange and I got three books two of which I'll probably use for collaging one will actually be a legit journal and it cost me three dollars and 76 cents and there's my hot where's the other one? Oh, I thought I lost one <laughs> hot and annoyed children oh, I just got back from the scrap exchange again I got this um, this cool book and it's perfect. It has room for about, I think, about 12 projects, which is really what I aim for. I don't like to do too many. It kind of gets, like, too daunting. If you have to fill up, like, 50 pages, it just gets very stressful for me. So I like doing ones that have fewer pages. Um, and also look for journals that have this thread binding and that are not glued. So if you do want to take out any pages, you can really easily and carefully... Find your the center thread where you see the thread, and you can very nicely like snip, score and like snip around those threaded parts. To, if you want to remove any pages, if your journals are going to be too thick, but this one is nice and thin, um, and it's perfect. And all the other thing that makes it really key and really awesome for using is that the pages are really matte. Um, gesso and paint do not adhere well to glossy surfaces, so make sure that your um, journals if you're going to do an altered book is matte that's why I don't like this cover is all glossy so I have to get all super duper crazy creative um, 
This one was nice and matte also. So I actually took spray. I didn't show this, but I actually used spray adhesive. This is fabric. And I just did a good coat on the underside of the fabric and on the cover, and I just glued it together. I didn't even iron this, and it's like perfect. And then I gessoed on top, and then I just stamped it and done. So this is tricky because it's glossy. So that stresses me out a little bit. This that I just got today for a dollar is totally matte. So I can paint on this if I want to directly right on there. And I know that it will adhere. I'll probably gesso first. And the first way that I get all my journals started is I go through and see how this is really not held together well because this is really old. It's also in German, I think. So I don't feel bad about covering it up because I don't even know what the heck it says, even though my mom speaks and reads German. Um... I just am not going to tell her. So that makes it less stressful for me to look. I'm trying to see if there's a year on here. Oh, 1964. That's awesome. There's a lot. I tend to get a lot of things that are ripped from the 60s for some reason. Um, and I'm sorry if I just, somebody's born in 1964, as people get, oh, did you just call me old? I'm like, well, if a book is from the 64, it, that makes it an old book. It doesn't mean you're an old person. Books and people are not the same thing. So I'm sorry if you're, uh, if you take offense to that. Um, I'm going to just take masking tape and I lay it down the center of usually all my pages because you can gesso and paint over masking tape really easily and really well. And that'll just shore up the spine. And then, yeah, then the rest is history. I'll have do this one-on-one -on, -one on YouTube and you can watch me go. But that is how you pick out um, a good altered book for your journal. And then hopefully you can go from this to, you know, something that's entirely filled up and that you can treasure forever. So, okay, have fun guys. And I'll see you on the next one when we're actually going to do a painting. All right, bye. Go. I just, this was sitting right in my stash here. I just wanted to show you, this is a great example of a book that's almost per perfect for using. Um, this one is very similar to that German one. It's also as aged dish. The illustrations here are awesome. Um, but this one is about 60 pages. Okay. So that to me personally is daunting. And if you're filling these up with paint, these pages are going to get really, really, really too fat. Um, and so I probably would go through and either do one of two things. One, just you tear out pages and use it for collaging or two, I'd go through and tear out every like fourth page maybe to skinny this down a bit. So maybe it's about 20 pages instead of 60. And then whatever pages I rip out, I can use for collaging and the rest can stay and become my journal. But it is really easy when they, when they come thin like this to just use it as is. You don't have to feel bad about tearing anything out. And um, yeah, you can go on your way. So I'm hope, hoping this is going to be helpful for you guys. And back to the two other pieces, the books that I bought, um, this, I'm going to use these, I might make this into sketching because I do love it when the back, when you do faces upon music sheets and there's not too, too many in there, but this will need some love. And this one I'm going to use for only for collage because there's a lot in here, um, way too many pages. And this is great for collaging because you have these nice, busy you know, music notes everywhere, which is great for collaging. So that's going to be the destiny of these two. And that's how I kind of pick and choose, like, which ones are going to stay for collage and which ones become, uh, become journals. So there's that. All right, so stay tuned, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye. If you have any questions, just pop them in. Um, and if you want to see, again, the flip through of this final version, you can, I'll put a link in the description box and in the little little eye in the corner of the video. Okay. Thanks guys. Bye.